Hey everybody, it's Holly here today with a new video for Newton's Nooks Designs. Today we're going to be using the Newton Dreams of London stamp set and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be using the wonky stitch circles and rectangles as well as the Tag Builder 6 set from MFT, the Newton Nooks Paul Print stencil, and the Land Border dies. Now this video is sped up really fast because it was a very long video. There's a lot of coloring involved and some other stuff. So we're just going to go kind of go ahead along here and I will explain as I go. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm using some Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. That is from Canson and that is the stuff that comes with the big yellow pad in case anybody was wondering. I really like this cardstock to use with watercoloring with the Zig Clean Color markers. It just has a nice smooth texture and you just get a lot. Uh, you can use this cardstock for a lot more with it being Bristol. You can stamp on it for your sentiments without having that rough texture. So I started out by stamping my sentiments on a piece of that Bristol Smooth cardstock and I used the Rangers uh, Archival Black Ink. This is my favorite black ink for watercoloring. So I'm going to go ahead and just start coloring my images in with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And I'm just adding some marker down and then I'm just going over with a damp paintbrush and then just filling in the colors. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys watch as I color. This isn't anything special that I'm doing. Um, after I have all the images colored for the first time and things dry a little bit, I go back and scribble the marker onto the mat and then I pick it up with the paintbrush and then I go back in and add some more dimension into the image with the dark, with directly with the ink.
Now that the images are all dry and everything, I'm going to go ahead and use the coordinating dies to cut those out with my Big Shot. Now I went ahead and added some crystal effects and some Nouveau drops to my images when my video wasn't recording at that time, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I did here. I used the translucent pearl drops or jewel drops in Seabreeze over the glass in the telephone box, and then I used the glitter drops in honey gold for the crown, and then I also used some liquid pearls in white opal to create the little pearls on the crown, and then I used a little bit of glossy accents in the center of the clock. And then I just set those aside so they could dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and start my background. And to do this, I use the paw print stencil. This is a new addition to the Newton Nooks line. Now, this is a new technique I'm showing here. I haven't shown this one before, but I'm taking the ink blending tool and I'm blending some candy apple distress ink right onto the stencil. And I'm using the back side of the stencil. And then I'm going to add some blueprint, blueprint sketch distress ink to the top part of the stencil. I'm kind of recreating the British flag, you could say, for my background. Now, this after you have that done, you're going to want to spritz the back of the stencil. Depending on how much water you put on, you're going to get either a darker image or a lighter image, and you're either going to have a fuller image or a more sporadic image. So this card has more of a lighter background because I spritzed it a little bit more than I should have with the water, so it kind of washed it out a little bit. I'm going to show you a second card at the end that has a much brighter background. I did the exact same technique, I just didn't spritz the card or spritz the stencil as much. So you just lay the stencil down over your Bristol cardstock, and then I'm using a paper towel to just dab up any excess that might be coming up through the stencil. And then I'm going to gently remove the stencil and then clean up my area around it so I don't get any of that on the rest of my card. And then I'm just going to go ahead and heat set with my heat tool and then just set that aside and start to work on the rest of my card. This is another great way to get some more use out of your stencils. So I'm going to go ahead and use the wonky stitch circle die and I'm going to cut from the Bristol cardstock. I'm going to cut one full circle, one three quarter circle. And then you can see what I'm doing here is I'm creating pieces that I need for my scene. And then I'm going to use the land border die and I cut a third circle, which is like a little quarter of it, just enough so you have that round edge of the circle. Then I'm going to use the curvy part of the land border die, and I'm going to lay that over. And this is going to give me two little half ovals, I guess you'd say. So I'm going to use the Zig Clean Color Marker, and I'm going to color one piece with some dark blue to create my little water area. And then I'm going to use some dark gray to create the ground. And I'm just adding the marker down directly to the paper, and I'm just adding a little bit of a wash with some water over it. And then I'm just going to dry everything with my heat tool. And then for the center of the circle, I'm doing the same thing, just putting some of the marker down on the mat. And then I'm actually picking it up with the wet paintbrush so that it's a softer look to create my background. Now on the other card I'm going to show at the end of the video, and also the one that's featured in my post over on the Newton Nooks blog, that one uses distress ink for the background, as well as distress ink for the little blue piece and the ground piece. And all I did was just cover the pieces with the distress ink directly. And then I just added some splattered some water and dabbed that off. But I just decided to use the zig pens here um, just to kind of see what that would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and add the water piece to the back of the ground piece, just kind of lining them up how I best see that they're going to look. And then I'm going to tape that to the bottom part of the circle. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a space along the top edge so that I can tuck my images behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the largest of the wonky stitch rectangle dies to cut that background piece. And then I'm going to use the next largest size of the rectangle to cut a piece of vellum. And I'm adding the vellum over the background because the background is kind of busy and then my images are kind of busy as well. So this helps kind of break up the background a little bit. It gives you some definition between the image part of the card and the background. So I'm going to go ahead and attach some foam tape to the back of the circle piece and then that I'm going to attach the circle piece to the front of the vellum and then I will add some adhesive to the back of the vellum and this is how I will attach the vellum to the card without you being able to see the adhesive through it.
So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside to dry for just a second. I'm going to lay a block on it to give a little bit of pressure onto it. I'm going to use that Tag Builders number six set from MFT and I'm going to use that tiny little tag die cut and I'm going to cut another piece of this bristol. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the Ello stamp from the Newton Dreams of London set and I'm going to stamp that in Versifying Black Ink. And then once I have that stamp, I'm going to go ahead and trim a little bit off the right hand side before I place it onto the front of the card. And I do apologize, I, when I start adding the images, I kind of go off camera a little bit with part of the card. It's just because of the way my camera is set up and I have to have things closer in front of me to see them a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and add the clock tower first and I'm going to add a little bit of the adhesive to the back of that and then I'm going to stick that down where it's behind the watcher uh, border that I put in that circle there um, because there's water in front of the clock and then I'm going to go ahead and add the tower or I'm sorry the telephone box overlapping the uh, clock tower just a little bit and those are just added directly with the um, liquid adhesive and then I'm going to go ahead and add the kitty cat with uh, some foam adhesive and then I'm going to do the same thing for the crown I'm going to attach that to the top of his head And then for my sentiment, I'm going to go ahead and trim that up like I mentioned and then I'm going to add a small piece of foam tape to the back of that and then I'm going to line that up just along the edge of the seam there. And I also added the panel to a top folding A2 size 110 pound card base. Um, I think I forgot that step but I did go ahead and do that so that I wanted to put the background down on that card base first and then I wanted to add my layers um, so everything wasn't so bumpy when I tried to put the big panel on. And that pretty much finishes up my card. So here you'll see both cards. The first card I did has a little bit of a darker background and the second one a lighter background. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.